And Nigeria has qualified for the women's 4 by 400 meter event of the 2023 World Athletics Championships held in, in Budapest, Hungary. The country's women's relay quartet clocked a time of 3 minutes 27.61 seconds to beat Ghana and Benin Republic at the grand finale of the Digitinubo Lagos Club Athletics Series and moved into 14th place in world ranking. Solomon Adjuziru reports. This is a local gathering of track and field stars in the country's commercial capital. But the fourth and final leg of the Digitinubu Lagos Club Athletics Series has gained international flavor, with athletes from Benin Republic and Ghana joining in the race. Benin and Ghana joined Nigeria at the Lagos Club Series in the struggle to qualify for the relay events of the 2023 World Athletics Championships in Hungary. To now have the Nigerian uh, relay teams attending the finals in a bid to qualify for the World Championships, that's the icing on the cake. It's, it's brilliant. So all of a sudden, in our very first year, we've gone from a local competition to a regional competition, and now we're an international competition. Nigeria has secured qualification for three out of five relay events of the 2023 World Athletics Championships holding in Budapest, Hungary. Running here at the Digitinobu Lagos Club Athletics Series, the 4x400 meters women's quartet joined the already qualified mixed relay and the 4x100 meters women's team. Having already secured the ticket for the mixed relays and the women's 4x100 meters, Nigeria needed a push from Benin and Ghana for the men and women's 4x100 meters and the men's 4x400 meters. The push was only enough for the women's relay quartet to run an impressive 3 minutes 27.61 seconds to move to 14th place to qualify for the championships. Joined house together and went for team like plan B. So like plan B mean like team Nigeria have team A and team B. So we have to push, uh, push each other to have the time. But it was not sufficient for the men. The four of Dubem Mwachuku, Nathaniel Ezekiel, Samuel Ogaji, and Chidi Okezie narrowly missed the time in the four by four hundred meters. Despite parading three sprinters who have already qualified for their individual events with sub-10 seconds runs, Fevo Ashe, Ichiorisha Ishakiri, Alaba Akintola and Gotsin Brume could not meet the 4 by 100 meter standard. If we are able to get two over three, we believe that is good for us. Now, we, among the five relays in Bu for Budapest, we've qualified for three. So we want to make it four. And then we, the last qualifying window, we want to see what we can do with the four by four men. The deadline for qualification and all entries for the World Championships is the 29th of July. On the 20th, there's still another qualifying window. And we are getting more and more and more closer. And I believe that we'll be able to meet that qualifying standard at, uh, the, uh, at Bene. It is another failed attempt for the men's 4x100 meters who could not secure a qualifying time here. They now look for another event elsewhere to be able to get their place at the World Championships. Salomon Ajizogu, TVC News. Lagos. Practitioners in the profession of surveying in Nigeria have been urged to fortify themselves with knowledge of relevant laws guiding the use of land to prevent avoidable litigation. This came to the fore at a land laws training for surveyors and was held in Oshogo, the Ocean State Capital. Rafiu Hamid reports. It's a training program organized in Oshogo for private practitioners of surveyors in Nigeria. The motive is to expose and enlighten the participants on requirements of law on rights of ownership, ways of proving ownership and limitations of ownership of lands. The essence of this training are surveyors who deal with land. We need to know all the laws you know, that are related to land so as to advise our clients and so also to do our profession in a way that is proper and legal. 
So it's, 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 it essentially it is to enhance you know, professionalism. Research persons are on the need for practitioners to have requisite knowledge about their profession, especially while serving as expert witness in court. They also advise the participants to always encourage prospective clients to do their due diligence before land purchase to avoid litigation. If they follow what the law says, this is not what I say, what the law says, they won't have any problem at all because everything is well spelled out in the law. Even their own professional codes specify what they should do and what they should not do. But basically what we are trying to teach them is the basic things that anybody dealing in land should know. And as a practitioner, we already have this thing in the court of law. So we also have been referred to as a, you know, expert with them when they come to land and matter in the court of law. And if you do not have adequate knowledge about law, you know, you will not be able to practice effectively in the court of law. So many litigation that we have here and there, most of the time, many people will lose their land because of the fact that the survivor that prepared the plan for them didn't do the adequate thing. Participants are now well equipped. It's to improve our knowledge on land law so that when we go to court as expert witness, we'll be able to perform better. By having this thing done here now, that exposes us to what is really happening within the court hall and what we are expected to do as a surveyor. This series of lectures during the training focused on introduction to land laws, English and customary land tenure systems, registration relating to land, land mortgage, and an overview of the Land Use 